seven. Um, <laughs> it's long time no see, so I thought, okay, let's make a video where I can show your face. I can't see your faces, but I can show my face to you. So a little change from the routine. So we started with this video today. Okay, today we'll be doing lesson number thirteen. What is that? Motion and time. Okay. We'll be doing lesson number 13, motion and time. In that, we are going to do a part 1 video today in which we are going to only do the measurement and the simple pendulum. Okay, this motion part we are going to take up in our video number 2. Right? So, what is measurement? We learned that in 6th standard, measurement is the comparison of an unknown quantity with some Fixed quantity of the same kind, isn't it? Suppose you want to take the length of a ribbon. What will you do? The shopkeeper will take the length of the ribbon. You have asked for one meter. He will take a measuring scale. Measure one meter of ribbon, cut it and give it to you, isn't it? So this is what is measurement. Comparison of an unknown quantity, that is the length of the ribbon with a known quantity, that is that of the scale to measure, right? This is what is measurement, right? What do we do, uh, measure in, uh, measure, what things do we measure in our day-to-day -day lives? And what are the tools that we use, isn't it? The first one right here, the most important one, right? In COVID times, what is that? It's a thermometer. You can find thermometers everywhere. You go to a shop, they are ready with a thermometer. You go to the hospital, they are ready with the thermometer. So, thermometers are used to measure temperatures. The second one is the measurement of capacity. So, this is a measuring can. We can use it to measure water. We can use it to measure oil. We can also use it to measure milk. The next three are the uh, instruments used to measure mass. Okay, so you have a uh, scale and you have a beam balance there. All these are used to measure mass. You go to a grocery shop, you go to a fruits or a vegetable shops, there all you can use this. Right? And the last one is a clock. Clock is used to measure time, isn't it? Okay, so when we measure a substance, what do we do? We write this in the form of some units, isn't it? So what are the units that we use? We use the SI units or International System of Units. So what is the SI unit of length? It is meters. The SI length of length, uh, the SI length, sorry, the SI unit of length is meters. The SI unit of mass is kilograms, the SI unit of temperature is Kelvin and the SI unit of time is seconds. Right? So, we are going to now see how ancient people started to measure time. What did they use? They used anything that appeared at regular intervals. So, periodic motions were used to measure time. What were the periodic motions known to the human beings at that stage? They are the rotation and revolution of the earth. Okay. The rotation and revolution of the earth is still being used to measure time. Our calendar is based on the revolution of the earth. Okay. The revolution of the moon was also used by certain people to form their calendars. Okay. The Tamil calendar or the Indian calendar, which is also called as the Panchangam, they call it. Okay, that is based on the rotation of the moon. It has got only 28 days in it. So these were some of the things that they used to measure time. Now let us take a look at some of the ancient clocks that human beings developed. Okay, so the first one here on your left side is a sundial. What is it called? It is called a sundial. These were one of the first clocks. This is based on the fact that the, any object will form a shadow, right? When it is in the sunlight. The sundial is also based on the similar principle. So you have a stick right in the center and the shadow where it falls will tell you the time. If you see closely, 
you can see that the arrow is pointing, the shadow is pointing to nearly 10 o'clock. So, from the sundial, we can make that the sun and the time of the date is 10. What is the disadvantage of this clock? This cannot be used at night because there is no light then, right? And this can also be not used if it, the weather is cloudy or there is no sun. If it is raining, we cannot use this. The next clock that you are going to see is an Egyptian water clock. This actually does not tell us the time of the day, but it tells the amount of time passed. One hour has passed, two hours has passed, three hours has passed. That is what it tells us. It does not tell us the time of the day. Okay. So the next clock is an interesting some more ancient clocks. On your left, what you see is the sun dialect, the Jantar Mantar. So, Rajput kings built these Jantar Mantars for finding the time. Okay, they were, you can find them across North India. This one probably is from Jaipur. So, how does it work? You can find the central tower is there. Okay, so it will cast a shadow on the arch that you see. Okay. From morning to afternoon, you can find the shadow on the left part of the arch. After the uh, afternoon, you can find the shadow on the right side of the arch. So, you can see the shadow there now. Okay, so the time may be around 1 to 2 o'clock. That's what the time will be. But this again cannot be used if it is cloudy or it is rainy or at night. You cannot use this type of clock. Um, the next picture is that of a sand clock. It is also called as an hourglass. Again, it does not measure the, uh, it can only measure the elapse of time. How much time has passed, it can tell you. But it cannot tell me the time of the day. One hour has passed, two hours has passed, three hours has passed. That, also, that only it can tell me. So, the modern clocks was the invention of this man you see here. Okay, Galileo. He is credited with the, not the invention of the modern clock as such, the principle behind it. Okay, so what was the principle? Galileo one day, he was in the church and he was looking at a uh, candle. At those times, electricity was not there, remember. So there were these candle stands which were hung from the uh, ceilings with the help of huge chains. And somebody had lit it and just had, and just kept swinging. So when Galileo had his pulse and measured the swing of the pendulum, he saw that it was equal. Each swing was of equal time. And this gave him the idea of pendulum. And based on this, the first pendulum clock was built. So this is the very first pendulum clock based on the findings of Galileo. So these are some of the modern clocks. Uh, on the left you find a digital clock, right? So this is, if you find that numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we call those set of clocks as analog clocks. But this one here is a digital clock. If it gives you the number, we call them as digital clocks. They have a small chip in it. It just measures the time. Okay. Uh, on the right is a very interesting clock because this is an atomic clock. This is one of the most accurate clocks. It will not show wrong time or even there will not be a lag of even one second for even thousands of years. So that much accurate these clocks are. There are few clocks only present mainly in the laboratories across the globe. So what we, uh, you and I use in our uh, wristwatches, we call them as quartz clocks. Okay, so there is a crystal called as clock, a uh, quartz, which pulsates at regular intervals of time. So this is what is used to make these clocks. Okay, so these are some of the modern clocks. Now, coming to the simple pendulum. Remember, the simple pendulum was the uh, basis on which the um, Galileo built his first clock. So here is a simple pendulum, right? Can you see? So this is fixed at the rigid support. So you need to fix this at a rigid support. Then you have a length of the thread and in the end you find a bob. We call this as a bob. Actually it is made up of metal. Okay, we already we have a metal bob. But since I don't have a metal bob, I use a heavy rubber bob. 
This is how the pendulum. So what is the movement of the pendulum? So it shows a to and fro movement. So this is at rest. So the pendulum is at rest. I take it to one position and leave it. So it swings. It shows a to and fro movement. The same movement is repeated again and again. So this we call this as a pendulum. Okay, this whole structure is called a pendulum. And what is the motion that it shows? It shows a to and fro movement. So this is the oscillation. The to and fro movement of the pendulum is called an oscillation. Okay. So at rest, remember the uh, this thing has, is at B. The bob is at B. I pull it to A and leave it. What will happen? It will go from A to B first. Then again B to C. Will it be stopping there? No, it won't stop there. This, from C it will again come back to B and then again to B. So this whole movement of traveling from A to C and C to A is called as one oscillation. Is called as one oscillation. This is what Galileo found. He found that the oscillations were took the same amount of time. Right? So, so the amount of time taken for one complete oscillation that is from movement from A to O to here to again A is called as a time period. What is it called? It is called a time period. How do you calculate it? What is the formula for calculating the time period? The time period is equal to the number of oscillations divided by the total time taken. Since the time taken for one oscillation is a very small amount, it is very very difficult for us to measure this. So what do we do? We let the pendulum oscillate for say 15 to 20 times and note down the time taken. Okay, this will give us the time period. So, what is the unit of this time period? The unit of time period is per second. What is the unit? The unit is per second. Remember, the time period of the pendulum depends only on the length of the thread. If you change the length of the thread, the time period will change. Okay, it does not depend on the Mass of the ball. Interesting, isn't it? It does not depend on the mass of the ball. You take a heavier metal ball, you take a lighter one, the time period will always make the same. But the time period will only change with the change in the length of the thread. Okay? So, in the next video, we will be seeing actually how to calculate a time period. I will be attaching that video shortly. We will be seeing that and you may find some exercises. That is all for today. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.